This video will cover some basics related to importing CAD files so that your parts are processed into ProNest correctly as you've intended. Let's start by talking about multiple part CAD files. So let's open the edit part list. Some CAD files are drawn so that they contain more than one part. So let's take a look at an example file that contains multiple parts. I have this example part here called BOM multi-part. Let's select this by clicking it. And in the preview you can see that this one contains two closed exterior profiles. So I'm intending to bring in both of these as separate parts. We have to tell ProNest that the file contains more than one part before it's added to the part list. So if I were to add this now, the part would be imported, but you can see that there's some problems here. The leads have been added on the wrong side of the profile. This is because ProNest couldn't detect what was supposed to be the exterior profile. Um, so this is a result we don't want. Let's get rid of this part now. This time, we'll select the part. And in the CAD Import tab, scroll down to the bottom. And there's a property called Contains Multiple Parts. So if I select this and then bring in the part, the part is now added correctly. So I have two parts here, two exterior profiles, and when you have this setting turned on, the parts are brought in as a single block and the spacing between them is maintained when the part's brought into the part list. Okay, there's another option here related to this. Let's select this part again. This time on the CAD import tab, we'll leave contains multiple parts selected, but we'll also select explode multiple parts. Now ProNest will bring these parts in separately as individual parts in the part list. Okay, you can see the result here. So the parts are brought in separately. So these are two different ways of bringing in multi-part CAD files. Some CAD files are drawn with a type of geometry called a spline. A spline is a type of curved polyline entity that you can create in CAD that passes through or near a series of control points. For those who do a lot of work in CAD, you might already be familiar with this. Though the spline object does have a curvature to it, it's not a true arc with a center, start, and end point. So with respect to ProNest, the important thing is that if you do nothing and just import the part, the spline will be interpreted as a series of straight line segments. So these will be linear motions and not arcs. Let's see how that looks in ProNest. So I have a sample part here. This is called spline.dxf. Select that one. Okay, I'll turn off contains multiple parts for this. And this top dome section of this part is a spline. So this was drawn as a spline in CAD. So this can be brought into ProNest in one of two ways. First is with smoothing off. So we have a property here called smooth entities. And if I clear this box here and bring it in, let's look at that now. The part's imported fine, but the spline is brought in as a series of line segments. Now let's look at the part in advanced edit. All right, and here's the part in advanced edit. Note that on the view menu, I have intersection points turned on. This shows me the limits between the different line segments on the part. And you can see that the dome section contains a lot of small line segments. So it consists of a lot of small contiguous line segments. If I were to select one of these in the properties area on the right, you can see that it's a line here. So when ProNest brings in parts, its job is to convert the geometry into motions that your cutting machine can understand. The cutting machine can handle either a linear motion, for instance a G01, or an arc motion, which might be a G02 or G03 command. So all part geometry in ProNest is included as either a line or arc when the part is output as NC code for your cutting machine. In this case, we've got a line segment, that might be a G01 instruction in output. 
So when the spline geometry is output, it would create a very large series of straight line motions in this case, one after the other in output code. So the result is that you'd get a rather large output file and the cut quality on the part edge might be a little bit rough and choppy as a result because of all the small individual motions. Now let's take a look at another way of handling splines. So let's return to nesting. We'll select this same part again in the part sources area. And this time on the CAD import tab, we'll select smooth entities. With this selected, these line segments will be converted into true arcs when the part is imported. Notice that there's a smooth tolerance box that appears when smooth entities is selected. This is a tolerance value for smoothing line segments into arcs. By default, this is set to a hundredth of an inch, but you can try adjusting this value to get the result you want. All right, let's add this part now with smoothing turned on. Okay, the part's imported. It looks pretty much the same as the previous one. Now let's look at it in advance edit. All right, so this top dome section contains far fewer individual motions in it. And if I were to select one of these, you can see that this is now a true arc motion. So this is a clockwise arc. This might be output as a G02 in output code. You can see the effect of smoothing. There are fewer motions now on this curved edge. There are long arc motions instead of short lines. This might provide a better quality edge to the piece when it's cut. Also, the output file will be smaller because it will contain fewer instructions in it. One trade-off of using smooth entities might be a slight loss of geometric accuracy, so you have to take these factors into account when deciding when to use smoothing and in setting a smooth tolerance value.